There was a ghost and three men and a baby. I remember this so clearly. It was this image. We all had to rent the video and get to this part. And then we saw the ghost in the background. They're hiding behind the curtains. We all heard he was a little boy who fell out that window, that window in that real apartment in New York that they were filming in. It turns out they filmed this on a soundstage, so there was no real apartment. Tom Selleck got to talk about this on Jimmy Fallon recently. Uh, he confirmed also there is no ghost. Uh, this was a case of a standee of Ted Danson that was folded in half and that was sitting there and looked so ghostly. I remember seeing this on Snopes when Snopes first came out. And what was interesting about Snopes in the early days was you weren't looking up things you had just heard of. You were looking up things that you had believed for decades. And then we found out all the answers. We found out that there was no ghost and Mikey didn't die from Pop Rocks. It's a standee of Ted Danson, you know, all dressed up that he had from some kind of commercial he did. This is a normal thing. This is a normal thing. Most of us, and I'm sure you guys have a standee of yourself in your home. I'll be right back. Look at the scary ghost on the couch. Go make a TikTok about the scary ghost you saw in the background of a YouTube video. And that you're scared the host is gonna get killed by the scary ghost. And that way, I get to go on Jimmy Fallon. Now here's an interesting thing. It says, a persistent urban legend began circulating in August of 1990, just before the sequel, Three Men and a Little Lady, premiered. I think this is an inside job. I think Disney created this ghost story to get more people to watch the movie. I think they wanted rentals to surge on the VHS of the first one, and then people were all hyped up, ready to go see that second one. New release. You got both of them. Three Men and a Baby, and Three Men and a Little Lady. Before Three Men and a Baby, you had Three Men in a Cradle. This was a French film. It was remade as Three Men and a Baby in 1987, which was then remade into seven movies in six languages. So here's uh, Three Homies in a Coffin. Now here's the plot of the French movie. It says three young men, Jacques, Pierre, and Michael. Isn't that... That's the... I think that's, if you just need Fritz and you've got the, the Enchanted Tiki Room. Here is the sequel to the French film. So this came after the American sequel by many years. This one's, it's, I don't know what the title exactly means, but basically it's like she's 18 years later. So now she's a grown adult and, and there she is with her three old men. Here are some of the foreign posters. I like this one. You've got the guy in the baby costume. This one, we've got the baby in, in what looks like a container full of, I don't know if those are, are balloons or if they're jelly beans or if they're maracas. I'm not sure what's going on. The one guy's like, look at him. He's the one pushing. Uh, here's, here's another. I mean, there's a lot of sequels and remakes. They really love this. This one doesn't appear to have any kids in it. I'm not sure how that works, but it's a musical. Here's one. This is like, they're all grown up, I think, because, you know, you can see the lady. She's she's big like them. And that was just called Hey Baby, by the way. Uh, here's the most recent one. And my God, look at this. This is, there's a lot going on. We've got, we've got two ladies. We've got three men. We've got a baby and we've got a stuffed horse. So here is the poster for the American film. Any poster where Tom Selleck is getting peed on is good with me. You know, I'm also looking at this. I'm not sure Tom Selleck didn't also pee himself. And maybe he was like, when he started getting peed on, he was like, well, this is my excuse. Here, be the first to see Three Men and a Little Lady. Here's some trivia from IMDb. It says, Director Leonard Nimoy had some arguments and differences with the lead actors. According to Gutenberg, Selleck, and Danson, they were used to being the bosses on their own television shows. I don't know what show Gutenberg was on. Leonard Nimoy was the director of this film. Here are his film director credits prior to that he had directed a couple star trek movies that makes sense he directed an episode of tj hooker and a couple other uh tv movies and episodes of things he directed an episode of night gallery at one point later he went on to direct an epcot ride it was basically the plot of the movie inner space where like you're injected into the body and you've got to go fix something uh but yeah he had a connection to disney 
And here he is reading Mad Magazine. Mad did a parody of Three Men and a Baby. There's Alfred upside down. Here is some of the text of Three Morons and a Baby. A baby? What are we supposed to do with a baby? About 15 minutes of adorable caca and wee-wee jokes, obviously. Uh, this is good. I like the uh, I like the artwork here. Uh, they got a cake that says Happy Birthday and King Kong's on the top of it. I heard, look, it says, who's that strange looking guy? That's Leonard Nimoy. He directed this movie. Is he any good? They say he's got an eye for comedy. He's certainly got ears for him. See, because he got those Spock ears. That's why they cast him on that TV show. He had those big ears. Now, here's a bit of trivia that blows my mind. This was the highest grossing movie of 1987 in the United States. This is it. Like, Top Gun was the highest grossing movie one year in the 80s. Batman was the highest grossing film one year in the 80s. I think Empire Strikes Back was the highest grossing film. And Three Men and a Baby. Here's the description from when it played on, like, the Sunday night movie. Uh, it said, Ted Danson, Tom Selleck, and Steve Gutenberg says, Cocoon, uh, star as three successful New York career men. And they find that they're totally unprepared to deal with the comic upheaval and radical responsibility that comes with newfound fatherhood. This is the plot of Big Daddy with Adam Sandler. <laughs> they're leaving out the most important thing of this story. This is a story that involves a package of heroin. And like, and, and the guy gets kidnapped and they're holding him for ransom and they're threatening Ted Danson's life. Uh, here is the ticket you would get to go to the sneak preview, which is pretty cool. This is like if you worked at the studio. And then when it came out on home video, they said there was a party for rent. Uh, anybody could go to that party. It looks like a fun party. Here are the other movies showing in theaters at that time. You can go see Leonard Nimoy Part 6 starring Bill Cosby. Uh, let's see what else. Batteries Not Included was playing. That was a fun Steven Spielberg movie. Planes, Trains, and Automobiles because this was a Thanksgiving weekend film. So that's a pretty good one. But Three Men and a Baby. There's the There it is. P rated PG. All right, here are the other movies. This is another theater. They had Hello Again. That was Diane from Cheers. And in that one, she had died and come back to life. We had Teen Wolf 2. Baby Boom. That had something to do with a baby. According to Wikipedia, in an episode of Friends, they have a flashback to that Thanksgiving. And that's when they all meet. They, they were all too busy meeting each other, making friends, to go see Three Men and a Baby in theaters. Season's greetings from Three Men and a Baby. When you have a movie that comes out around the holidays, you got to do a special holiday ad. So I put little party hats on them. I like that. Santa hats. Some sequels are fit to film, but others... This is an article from a guy named Chris Hicks from when the movie came out. And he says, of course, in this case, they won't need Roman numerals. The sequel will obviously be called Three Men and a Toddler, followed by Three Men and a Grade Schooler, Three Men and an Adolescent, and then just Four Men. They did a parody on In Living Color called Three Champs and a Baby, and you had a bunch of boxing champs. By the way, if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. Be like the Fonz. That'll push this video out to more people, and that's what I want. I want more people to see this and share the love of the three men and a baby ghost and find out about the ghost behind me. Here is an autographed picture of the cast signed by Steve Gutenberg to Japan. All of Japan. <laughs> This is the Japanese poster. I like this alternate Japanese poster. Like if you look closely at this child's drawing, you can see pretty good likeness there. Gutenberg, eh, I mean, who knows? But I mean, that looks a lot like Tom Selleck and that looks a lot like Ted Danson. Here are the two twin girls that played the baby. You always get two, kind of like the Olsen twins. And uh, these are the two. They're all grown up. Three Wise Men and a Baby. This was a movie on the Hallmark Channel I think is unrelated other than in title. Here's a cover of a comic book called Three Monsters and a Baby. My favorite part of the movie is the beginning where they're playing Bad, 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 Bad Boy. Uh, they're playing that song and Steve Gutenberg's painting this big mural, which I thought was the coolest thing ever. I mean, I just dug this mural and I remember thinking every time I was in New York, Whenever I would walk into a building, I'd start looking around. I was like, what if this is the building? What if that mural's still here? Oh, man. Stars of this movie included Magnum P.I., Tom Selleck. He almost was Indiana Jones. He had the coolest mustache of the 80s. Then you have Ted Danson, star of Cheers, Sam Malone. 
And this, by the way, this show holds up. This is the greatest show ever made. And then you had Steve Gutenberg. It said Cocoon, which he's in. Uh, I remember he was in Police Academy. That was like his big one. And then he did a movie with Kirstie Alley, who played Rebecca Howe on Cheers. And then they had the two Olsen twins in it. So it was like two kids again. It was like the, the same thing. It was like and he had Steve Gutenberg had to raise a baby. He didn't know what to do. He had to call Ted Danson and Tom Selleck to... To see what to do. Well, that's going to bring this one to a close. In a moment, two boxes are going to pop up. On this side will be the one that YouTube says is best for you. But on this side, this is going to be when I took a look at the entire history of Gilligan's Island and all of its spinoffs. This movie, Three Men and a Baby, feels like a sitcom. So Gilligan's Island, another sitcom over here. Hope you enjoy it. Either way, come back tomorrow at 2 o'clock because I'm going to have something brand new for you. I'm glad you were here. I'll see you tomorrow.